Hi, and welcome to Life in the Prairie. I'm Johnny Gurmshide. In this news brief, we'll take a look at the steps the city of Eden Prairie is taking to increase its water supply. New wells being built at Pheasant Woods Park. To get to the bottom of it, let's go to Scott Neal reporting at the scene. This is Scott Neal. I'm Eden Prairie City Manager, and we're here at the site of uh, our well number 16 project. And with me here today is Rick Willeen, and Rick is our utilities manager, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this project. How are you doing, Rick? Just fine. Thank you, Scott. What's going on behind us here? I see that this is the well drilling uh, machine, and there looks like they're spitting out some slurry of some kind. Tell us a little bit about what's going on behind us. Well, Trout Wells is here today, and they've been uh, on site ever since uh, about the second week of June, and they're in the process of developing this well. They've uh, spent a number of days drilling the well, and uh, today what you see behind you, uh, the gentlemen are doing some purging operations. They flush the well up and down a whole lot with some water. They expand the cavity that's down below. And uh, in the course of doing this, they also do some blasting with dynamite. They use 10-pound charges at various locations deep down in the earth, and that helps expand the cavity from which we get our well water. Ultimately, we should be at about 400 feet. And then the water is pumped up through through pumps and pipes and then it goes to the treatment plant? Is that what happens to it next? Yes, that's correct. This is going to be a different kind of a well than we have in use elsewhere within the town. We're going to install a submersible pump in this well. This means we do not have a well house at this location and uh, we have a much smaller footprint, a lower profile, and it doesn't impact the uh, use of the park quite so much. Is there any concern, anything anybody has to worry about, about having a, a well like this right next to a park or right in a park? It should impact the park very minimally, and we uh, cited the location of anything that's above the ground to be away from the line of traffic for uh, soccer fields and, and activities and that sort of thing. So we've deliberately tried to keep it as uh, far out of the, the play area as possible. How much does a well uh, like this cost us? Uh, ballpark around half a million dollars. Okay. And how, how long does it last into the future typically? Do, is that something we know already? Well, our other wells have been in place for a long, long time. Uh, typically a steel-cased well such as what we have can expect about 50 years before the steel casing starts to uh, erode through. Can we just drill as many wells as we want to uh, down into the aquifer or do we have to get somebody's permission for that? Stewardship comes into mind. Uh, the city of Mexico City uh, itself is sitting on a massive aquifer and uh, they lowered the town a full 10 feet by pumping wells more than they should have. Uh, there's other towns throughout the world that have similar problems where they've actually uh, it caused people who were homeowners with wells to have to abandon their, their water use so that it wouldn't uh, endanger everyone else. I don't see anything like that happening here in Minnesota, but we have such a demand on the Jordan Aquifer that if it's not shared properly and managed properly, uh, other people will go without water. We might be able to pump a whole lot more and get a lot more out of it, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do for everyone involved. Do we have to get the permission of the of the state or the feds or the Met Council or something to drill a well like this, or can we just uh, decide ourselves to do it? Well, it would be nice if we could make that decision ourselves, but it is governed by the state. Uh, Minnesota Department of Health, in com combination with the uh, Department of Natural Resources, uh, they pretty much oversee all the wells in the state of Minnesota, and they control the, uh, the decision on whether or not another well should be should be uh, drilled. And to do that, they need to take a look at each community's use. They need to look at what is the uh, appropriate amount of water that that community needs to have to do normal business. And then they look at your summer demand and uh, through the course of making a, a kind of a rough estimation on what you really should do in order to meet that summer demand, they will allow you to go into the future and drill more wells to meet that approximate demand. And right now we're above what that approximate demand should be for a, a town of our size. Rick, Rick, what is this stuff that is coming out of the out of the well, or is this stuff we're putting into the well? What is what are we looking at right there? What you see is pulverized limestone and sandstone. This is what's left over after the the cuttings or the material that's been ground up and uh, and removed from the ground in order to create this well. As you drill a hole, just like you have a drill bit boring into wood, you have shavings and filings that come out of the hole. That's what is coming out from 400 feet deep under the ground. Yes, and that's what our water is embedded in. The drinking water we have in Eden Prairie is coming out of this uh, material here. Well, thanks, Rick, for your time here and for uh, sharing your knowledge with uh, citizens about what's happening here at well number 16. And uh, that's all we got for today. Johnny, back to you. Thanks, Scott.
By adding this well, the city is ensuring that the water resources need in Prairie will be available for generations to come. Thanks for joining me, and live well, Eden Prairie.